here we are in Birkenhead Priory, which is the oldest building still standing on Merseyside. Dates from 1150, when it was established by Benedictine monks. And it's one of the few medieval buildings where I guess you can see almost right next door Royal Navy ships being refitted and repaired at Camel Laird Shipyard in Birkenhead. It's the kind of building you might expect to see alongside green fields and um, open countryside. But here we are now <coughs> in the middle of heavily industrialized Birkenhead. Lots of activity going on in the shipyard right next door. And um, well, you can probably hear the, the humming and whining of various industrial machines. So here we are, um, Birkenhead Priory. I've come out early on a Sunday morning. I was quite surprised to find the building actually open when I got here. I am the single visitor, as far as I can tell. If I do have to interrupt the video, it's because of the uh, maintenance work being carried out in the shipyard right next door. It's a fascinating sight because, of course, dating back to 1150, when the Benedictine monks um, set the priory up. <coughs> That's probably the wrong terminology, but you get what I mean. Of course, in those days, it would have been completely um, open fields and countryside around here. Uh, they ran, I believe, the first ferry across the River Mersey which incidentally will feature in a future video. Um, not the original ferry, I mean the current Mersey ferries. Um, but yeah, they, I believe, established the first ferry crossing across the river here. Um, and there would have been nothing else in the immediate vicinity, obviously maybe a few cottages and farmsteads. It's a beautiful spot, the remains of the building uh, there's the chapel, there's the tower, and there's, there's quite a lot to see. Photographically, not the easiest place to photograph. Um, getting far enough away from it is an issue. Um, I've got the Olympus EM10 with the kit 14 to 42 lens. I do have the 40 to 150 lens with me. Um, but really in this environment, um, you could do with something a little bit wider than the 14 mil. So 12 mil would probably be ideal. But of course then, even, um, even with a wider field of view, um, <clears throat> you can't really get far enough away from the building to avoid tilting the camera up. So you, you do get converging verticals really no matter which way you approach um, this from a photographic point of view. Of course you can correct it in post. If you're not careful, you can um, uh, degrade the image if you uh, correct converging verticals too much. But um, if I get any that I think are applicable, I'll put them on screen for you to have a look at and show you maybe how I go about um, manipulating them. But for now I'm going to um, have a wander around. I don't think the tower itself is open today. Uh, I would dearly like to get some uh, views from on high, but I suspect that's not going to be possible. But we'll give it a go, see what else we can come up with. So at this point, I thought it was worth putting in a short section of video 
just to illustrate this point about the converging verticals and how you can um, should and should not go about trying to correct them in post production so in the first that is how it was seen by the camera without any correction this second image however is using the warp tool within affinity photo and most software packages have something similar to this the problem is when you use the warp tool yes you can correct the converging verticals but if you notice there's a big difference between the width of the tower in this image and the previous one and then in the third and final image it's the basically it's the same um, JPEG but with the converging verticals uh, corrected correctly using the perspective tool well I was actually wrong here I am at the top of the tower I think it's St Mary's Tower I've come round to the shady side because the noise from Camelard's shipyard is overpowering as you can probably hear already warning sirens going off um, but from up here you do get a stupendous view across Birkenhead the tower you can see behind me over there is Birkenhead Town Hall and if I just pan you around hopefully before any horrendous noises start you can see a large bulk carrier heading up the Mersey with the cathedral behind it and away in the distance you've got the the three graces the liver buildings etc uh, it's 101 steps up here so um, huh, I can still do it anyway so that's good to know. Uh, now, because it's relatively quiet in the shipyard, I'll just let you have a look at what's going on down there. Uh, the Royal Navy ship is Fort Victoria. And I'll do some research and let you know exactly what type of vessel that is. Whether it's Fleet Auxiliary or something like that, I don't know. Um, seems to have a helicopter deck on the back end. And obviously it's in for some sort of refit or maintenance. So I'm going to do some stills now. See if I can excite you with them. A couple of shots I've just done are using the 14 to 42. I'm just now going to change over to the 40 to This is known as the Knox Bell, K-N-O-X, which was reinstated at the top of the tower in 1990. So, definitely easier on the way down. Nobody else in, still. So we'll get back out in the sunshine. You never know, maybe even the tea room will be open. Well, we made it safely both down and up St. Mary's Tower. Great views from up there. Um, so whether I've got anything to call a keeper is debatable, but at least I can give you guys an idea of what it's like around here. It's a beautiful spot. We have these picnic tables here. Um, 
So I'm going to see if I can catch a cuppa before I carry on. But priority number one is battery change. See you in a bit. So there we are, that was a quick tour around the um, around Birkenhead Priory, which as I said at the beginning, it was established in 1150. Um, there are Victorian add-ons of course, including the church that you can see now. I may or may not have got some keepers, I don't know. Um, everything was taken of course on the EM10 Mark I with the 14 to 42 or the 40 to 150. Um, cheap, compact outfit. The vast majority were shot at an ISO of 200. Uh, just a couple of interior ones were shot at ISO 1000, which I've not used before on this camera. So we'll, we'll have a look and see what they come out like, um, you know, in terms of noise. Compositionally, they're probably awful. Um, with the sun beating down on me and uh, after an hour and a half here there are still only two other visitors as well as myself so I've picked a very quiet day even the shipyard alongside has been nicely quiet so for now I will wind this video up by saying look after yourselves first and foremost secondly Nearly as important, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.